It's 1623. Europe is a continent dominated by charmers like Borelli, Boyle, Brahe, Bruno, and Bacon. A big bunch of bees. <laughs> They're all making sci fantastic scientific discoveries, opening man's mind to the wonders of the natural world and beyond. But who enters the scientific scene? Margaret Cavendish. Even as a baby, she is screaming at the perfect frequency to shatter glass. She's going to be a hit. She will be an author, a scientist, a revolutionary thinker, and a, a woman. Oh, no! No, this is terribly wrong! All that intelligence wasted in a woman. Whatever shall we do? Certainly we shall not educate her. She shall learn to sew, play the lute, and spin it? Oh, yes, I feel much better now. No. What? what? I said no. Well, it's, it's not a hearing issue. issue. It's an understanding issue. I will not learn to play the spinet. I will ask my faithful and intelligent brother John to tell me all that he knows about academia and science. And he will tell me. My first question for you, John... What is a spinet? Even though she did not have access to a boy's education, she learned all a boy could have and then some through visits to the public library. Now it's 1642. The English Civil War, Roundheads versus the Royalists. Cavendish's family had chosen their side, the Royalists. She was 17 when the Civil War broke out when her family went into exile with Charles I. She was separated from many of them. This was a traumatic experience for her. Trauma! Cavendish Circle meetings were arranged by William Cavendish, her husband, and were scholarly meetings where Margaret met thinkers like Hobbes, Descartes, Mersenne, Gassendi, and Digby. In male chauvinistic pig fashion, they never included me in the academic discussions that ensued, and rarely addressed me, even for a spot of tea. Uh, tea here, please. Get your own tea, Digby. Well, some lemon with that tea, Digby, cause this one's sour. <laughs> Since no one would play with her, Cavendish had to synthesize conversations with an imaginary third person. She posed numerous intelligent, surprisingly sane theses and observations. Hey, what do you think of this? Each of these worlds having its own sun to enlighten it, they move each one in their peculiar circles, which motion is so just and exact that neither can hinder or obstruct the other, for they do not exceed their tropics. Yes, what do you think of that idea, Margaret? Oh, I think it's wonderful. Your analysis is absolutely stunning. Oh, I thank you, Margaret, dear. By world, she meant planets. By peculiar circles, she meant the planet's elliptical orbits. And by tropics, she meant the track of the orbits. Simply put, Cavendish was stating that the planets will never collide because they have orderly and exact orbital tracks. Cavendish wrote poems and letters, novels and even plays. While some readers praised her originality, others criticized her spelling, grammar, and writing style. What? Uh, there is a large difference between our sun, S-U-N, is the center of the universe, and our sun, S-O-N, is the center of the universe. But you know what I mean. Cavendish was just as much a politician as she was a philosopher, scientist, and writer. As a woman, she had to play the game of politics and had to tread lightly with every contradictory theory she posed, yet hold her own in her male-dominated field of interest. She was the first and only woman in the 17th century to visit the Royal Society of London. As was expected, the majority of her works were published after her sudden death at age 50. And once they were, she was one of the most published women during the scientific revolution. Her most famous work, the description of a new world called The Blazing World, was arguably one of the first sci-fi books and was revolutionary because it explained science to women. Yes, it's about bear, bird, and fox people. Yes, a revolutionary work to be sure. And now you know about Margaret Cavendish. And to all those who didn't know who she was before, I hope you learned something useful. I really was quite famous, but nobody even knows who I am. I hardly, I'm hardly even mentioned in your textbook. If you didn't read carefully, you wouldn't even know. Do you know who I am? 
Well, now you do, of course. But did you before this? This is so stupid. Men are stupid. Yes, you're stupid. Hey. You uh... hog all the spotlight. God, you don't even know who I am. Do you know how sad I am right now? Bloody hell. You're stupid. <laughs> Should we open up windows, something we can make here? Yeah.